All right, Steve, do your thing, man. Ready? Yes. Oh, no! No, he didn't! Hey, guys, I'm here inside Cards HQ with the one and only Steve Aoki. We're going to shop for some cards and learn a little bit more about Steve as we do it. Let's go. Fixed all my beautiful guitars. Steve, I know you were a big collector of many different things. Yeah. Why are collectibles such a big part of your life? I think they've always been part of my life since since I was a kid. Just I always find whatever I find a passion in, I I want to dive into all of it, you know. So like I've I've pretty insane like music collection, comic book collection, and then early on was like cards, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I, I I got back into it during COVID, and then I went full like full bore crazy right. into like it. COVID yeah. Hit. Now like my appetite's pretty satisfied. <laughs> I'm happy because I spent so much money on cards um, at the boom. But you still selectively buy. I do. I You're do. Still buying I, yeah, I'm now. still like I'm sniping. You're sniping now. now. Yeah, yeah. Before I was like shotgun blasting certain yeah. things. So not as much speculating. Yeah. More grail hunting. Yeah, yeah. I'm not speculating at all. Okay. I, I like to know, mm -hmm. you know, I'm always curious like what everyone wants. You know, I think it's just it's just general as a DJ, you, you always want to know where the, the current's going, where music's going, where culture's going. And I think with collecting, I still want to know why are people hunting this? What the hype's all about? Like, I'm always very curious about that. Well, we're going to go here first. All right, think, so you're starting you're starting with the soccer aisle. Why yeah, are you yeah. starting with soccer? Because this card actually bought the PSA 10 of this for $400,000. So the story is, this is like one year before that car was 400 mm -hmm. grand. Uh, I was bidding on this car. This one, I was, I stopped at 72. Okay. Then wow. it went, then it sold for yeah, like, I think nuts. it sold for like a hundred, hundred grand or something like that. Yeah. But I should have ended up getting it then. Because yeah. I, when I missed it, I'm like, oh, I gotta get yeah, it Yeah, the then time. you gotta pay a lot more And then for the it. next yeah. time it was on gold and I'm like, I've gotta yeah. go in yeah. fucking big. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I have to get the GOAT of soccer. PSA 10. I mean, that's a long hole for me. I've, I'm never gonna sell it. Yeah, hundred so. percent. All right. Well, I know you have the 10, but yeah. we're gonna get the okay, we're gonna get we're that gonna one get out for you as well. Such a classic. This is an important card. This is to me one of the most important cards. Do you see a lot of crossover between collectibles and like pop culture in general from that perspective? It seems like. It seems like if you, you become kind of a master of where people's attention is and what gets them excited, it presents so many opportunities, not just in the collectible space, but does it translate over to yeah. everything you're doing elsewhere as well? Yeah, the philosophy runs the same across the board. So because I'm, I've already had an affinity and had a passion with certain things in this world, it just makes sense for me to understand what the hype is, where what people are interested in, where what people are speculating on, uh, what trends have gone down, what's going up, uh, just like with music or whatever interests I have. Mm -hmm. I'm always interested in the whole, the whole like market cap or understanding what the business is or what, what, what all of it means. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's definitely, you know, you could draw lines between all of it. We gotta get a UFC card. All right, I know you're a big UFC fan and you've done a lot. Is, is UFC out of all the sports, do you think you've got more UFC cards than any other sport? I, I have to be one of the top five biggest UFC mm -hmm. collectors. And is some of that the Vegas connection? Like I know obviously UFC is largely based in Vegas. They do a lot of stuff in Vegas. You're in Vegas. Is that part I of just, the reason for the crossover? I am, I am obsessed with UFC. Okay. I just like, you know, like my, the origin story of reason why I love UFC is, is really starts when I was a kid because I love Bruce Lee. Uh, <laughs> to me, Bruce Lee is like yeah. the kind of like without yeah. Bruce Lee, there is no UFC. Yeah. In my opinion, yeah, you know, Bruce Lee is like, like what spawned like this interest in fighting, and you know, of course, it's Chuck Norris, Jackie Chan, but Bruce Lee is to me the goat of all goats. Yeah, so that got me into UFC later on, and then, and then, you know what? A lot of the actual athletes, they're really awesome people, mm -hmm. and they, and I've got to meet them, and that's also led me into the, to the sport even more. Mm -hmm. So like, when you get to meet, like, I remember I met John Jones. Uh, like 12 years ago and he came up to me and and he's like yo I'm John Jones like su super humble yeah and then we made like a sparring yeah. video and it was so fucking cool yeah. looking back at that you know how cool he was 
Yeah. And then, you know, him coming to my show and we're like throwing cakes. So like when you meet like certain people in the sport and they, they definitely bring you in more, you know what I mean? Right. Like that's, that's really, that's like what's done it for me for. Well, do you want the John Jones card Let's get then? John Jones. Let's get John Jones. Yeah. That's, that's a, a good one. That's expensive one. That's a big one. That is Plus, a big one. That's his color blast. I love color 2021 blast. 2021 so, PSA 10. So you got, you got like both. You got, you got John Jones, the goat. And then you have Color Blast, yeah, which is which is also like one of my favorite inserts, like Kaboom and Color Blast, yeah, definitely in the top two. But by the way, do you see my shoes? Kaboom! I love that. <laughs> I love that. I love those shoes. Speaking of Kaboom, yeah. So when you were collecting as a kid, what did your parents think of this? Were they were they supportive? Were they collectors themselves? Yeah. So my I, when I w got into collecting during COVID, my my dad unfortunately passed away. Uh, in 2008 mm -hmm. but um he was a massive collector and i definitely got it from him for sure uh he had the most insane art collection really incredible taste with art and he had he had like pretty insane car collection um and i mean he lived so many different kinds of lives he had so many different passions like myself and he would just acquire and collect like in that space and it was just amazing to go back to, to his house whenever I would go visit him in New York and just see the history of all the different things that he's done, whether mm. it's wrestling, hot air ballooning, driving across the country in his cannibal runs, to like all the incredible adventures. His it's like, uh, offshore boat racing, he had, he had like all this memorabilia in that whole world. His memorabilia trove of, of collectibles was incredible. Mm. So I definitely, that, that's influenced me heavy on the subconscious level for sure. When you were collecting as a kid, uh, those cards that you that you got, yeah. do you, did you keep those or did those yeah, just yeah. Get, all get lost along the way? A few of them I kept. I think okay. um, I still have some of the, you know, the full box sets where they have the whole. Sure. I mean, they're sitting around. I remember. Was this I, like early 90s? This or? is all 90s. Okay. It's okay. so all 90s. Yeah. So it was all junk wax era. So okay. they're, like, they're worth like pennies now. Right. But I did get a few of them graded. Uh -huh. I got some like Barry Sanders rookies graded. Ken Griffey Jr. rookie okay. created 90, 1990s basketball, like Michael Jordan cards, so like stuff like that. So now were these all were they all pristine? Did they come back as tens, or I, did you I like think... most kids like <laughs> leave them unprotected in shoe boxes, beat up? Yeah, you think like it's like in a binder. You think it's fine, and it's not. Yeah, it's it's like comes back as like because I remember I got most of them graded from SGC because uh -huh. they reached out to me when I first got into it, and. Uh, and there was like SGC fours, fives, oh, wow. six, sevens. Okay. I know the like, feeling. Yeah, yeah. I know the feeling. <laughs> My childhood realize, collection's yeah. like the same way. Because you look at it, you're like, oh, this is mint. And yeah. you're like, it's actually not. Yeah. And I learned a lot about yeah. what mint really means. Yeah. yeah. Should we get a Pokemon? Let's get like a, a crazy Pokemon. Well, crazy Pokemon's over here if you want oh, okay. something high end. Okay. These are, these are pretty crazy Pokemon cards. All right. Ones do you don't see every one. day. We have to get that Pikachu. Yeah, that's a pretty cool one from 2006. Hey, yeah, the Gem Mint CGC. Yeah. yeah, a CGC 10 is a tough grade. Yeah, yeah, that, and like, and he's like, he's like the um, got the power pose. I love that actually. Isn't that a cool one? He's got the power pose. Yeah, the pose on that is like just fierce. In 2018, I, I made a song called Pika Pika. I love Pikachu. There you go. <laughs> so perfect. There you go. So not only do you enjoy collecting, but you've actually created things in the collecting world yourself. I know you've got a new set, for example, that just came out and you've done different projects along the way. Tell me what you're doing and like what your favorite thing that you've gotten to do is. Yeah, so um, that's right. So Hero Quest Collector's Edition. I and think. these are interesting because this kind of a, a crosses over from, from the music yes, side of your yeah. life and the collecting side of your exactly, life, right? Exactly, exactly. So with this set, I really wanted to talk about the story that, that I've been writing mm -hmm. for the last year and a half. And actually, it's 50,000 words in a book that's coming wow. with, with the cards. Oh, okay. So that way people can actually see the backstory of the characters and get the secrets of what the game to come will be mm -hmm. like. And, uh, you know, designing these characters with all the incredible artists I work with and building it out with my music. Because my whole music project right now is HeroQuest. Mm -hmm. And the first two albums, mm -hmm. I'm introducing the worlds of HeroQuest. Mm -hmm. um, before the cards drop. So mm -hmm. this is all like kind of the roadmap to what the cards will be in the first set. It's which super is cool. super limited, super yeah. rare because we only made 11, like only 1130 boxes. Okay. We dropped it on 1130 on my birthday. Okay. The non-rares card is like 300. The rares cards are 101 and then like 
even if you get a base car, it's only 300 of those cars made. I, I love how you've crossed yeah. over the music side of your life and telling the stories through music, but then connecting it back to cards and a yeah. game and a book. I mean, that crossover is so cool. I had COVID to kind of, you know, replant myself and, mm -hmm. and try these different lanes and, and worlds of, of interest that, that, that was there. You know, because I'm a science fiction kid, I, I love comic book culture, I love manga, I love anime, mm -hmm. and I wanted to bring that into, you know, an IP that I can create. So having that time to be able to like really understand how to do it, and now being able to do it now is great. So it's, you know, it's been four years in the making. That's awesome. Yeah. We got to go for the Jordan. Yeah, the 86 Fleer. Because that's the, that's the that, iconic that, one, that's right? That's the most iconic sports yeah. car. That and the Mickey Mantle are the most, two most important sports cars in the and over time, you kind of have to wonder, you know, if the, the I think the Jordans are only going to rise in popularity. He's such yeah. a figure just beyond sport, you know? So that was, this is the first lot of cars I got when I got into high-end cars during COVID. Okay, 86 I, Fleer? I got a PSA 7 Jordan. Okay. I got a, a PSA 4 uh, Leaf mm -hmm. uh, Jackie Robinson. Those are the two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. I got those two. Nice. And I got a Luca. You know, how to get the Luca. Right. The base Luca. Right, of course. You know? And then I ended up but that started it all off. And then I bought 60 more, $1,600. You want to end on, you want to you look at football maybe yeah, to end go. it? Yeah, sure. Oh, the new Brady. That, that's a, I love that Bowman Chrome. That's like the. You've got one of those in the refractor, I yeah, think, right? I do, a PSA 9. Maybe you need the new Brady. Okay, let's go for the new Brady. You want to go for the new Brady? Yeah, let's do it. What did you think of that whole promotion that Tops did? with putting Brady, you know, on a baseball card. I think it was great, man. Everyone like got so excited. Yeah. This is Brady, you know what I mean? This is the out of 75. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a big card. It's a really cool card. I mean, Brady holding a baseball mitt like that, like that's, <laughs> that's crazy to see that. Yeah. You know? I have a pretty big Brady collection, so this will be a unique one. There you go. So Steve picked out his cards, and I'm about to check him out. But before I do, we got to end this in Steve Aoki fashion. Colin volunteered for this. It's his birthday. He's part of our Cards HQ team. All right, Steve, do your thing, man. Ready? Yeah. Hey guys, hey, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.